Callisto, discovered in 1610 by Galileo. It is the second largest moon of Jupiter and the third largest moon in the solar system. Callisto is 4,800 kilometers in diameter and it is just a bit smaller than the planet Mercury, but it as well as one third the mass of Mercury. Callisto has a surface area of 73 million square kilometers, which is similar to the surface area of Asia and Africa combined, so it is quite a big place. This large moon has one of the oldest surfaces in the solar system because there was no geologic activity going on to change it, which is why it is as well one of the most heavily cratered objects in the solar system, close to saturation. So then, what would standing in this ancient surface of Callisto be like? First of all, we would need spacesuits because it is very close to vacuum there, plus the temperatures average minus 139 Celsius, which is not that bad for an object 700 million kilometers away from the sun, but it is still quite cold. So the first thing that would be noticeable is that you would be much lighter. Since Callisto's gravity is 8 times weaker than Earth's, you would be 8 times lighter, and walking around the moon would be much less exhausting than on the Earth. Taking a look in a distance, you would see a fairly harsh and deformed landscape. It would be icy and metallic. There would be craters within craters. And since there was no resurfacing on Callisto going on, if you could bring a microscope and take a look at the rocks, you would see many more miniature craters inside craters, all down to the microscopic level. Those were created by many microscopic rocks and particles hitting the surface, and the craters stay there because of near vacuum and no activity. Generally, the color of the surface would vary a bit, from gray to a very bright color which means that while being in these bright spots, it would be harder to see since it is very reflective. Getting around this ancient surface as well would be quite tricky and getting lost would be possible, since gigantic structures like multi-ring impacts would close the view within few kilometers, so an occasional big slope-like wall would be visible. Now, there are no mountains on Callisto, but there are places that contain gigantic ice spikes created by ejecta. These average around 100 meters in height, and there are a lot of them. Getting around these spikes would be like walking through a maze. Looking up, there would be no atmosphere, or at least any significant one, since it does contain a bit of carbon dioxide, but interestingly, this atmosphere should have been lost within 4 days, but it somehow gets replenished, possibly by sublimation of the ices on the surface. So there would be just the night sky. But facing a different direction, you could witness Jupiter. It would appear gigantic, despite the fact that they are a million and eight hundred thousand kilometers apart. Callisto is the furthest of the big moons of Jupiter, hence the reason it is kinda geologically dead, less tidal forces are acting upon it. But it also gets the least amount of radiation out of all the big moons, making it safer to land on. Interestingly, if we were to drill the surface of Callisto, it would be likely that we would find an underwater ocean, or at least water ice. But if it is liquid, there should be some ingredients for life. But there is less tidal heating on Callisto than on the other moons of Jupiter, so it is kinda questionable. So all in all, Callisto may be a dead moon, but it does look lively because of the bright spots that resemble Earth's cities during the night. It also could teach us a lot about the past of the solar system, since there was no activity going on on it since the formation. Interestingly, there has been some interest put into Callisto. A manned mission to Callisto was considered by 2040s, and it would be quite a nice thing if humans in the future could create a base on Callisto's ancient surface, so we could research, discover, and learn a bit more about our universe.